map was created by Charles Hitchcock, the first New Hampshire state geologist, and it was created in the 1870s in Hanover uh, when the state geologist was at Dartmouth. And in 1893, the map was moved to Durham with UNH. For my nearly 44 years here, it has been just a wonderful teaching tool. It was created at a scale of one inch equal to a mile, so it stands some 15 feet high. The map is going to be disassembled. It's in three large pieces. This whole thing is going to have to come up 14, 16 inches. So during the renovation of James Hall, our plan is to repair it, which it desperately needs, to clean it, which it desperately needs, and to reinstate it to its original condition with the geology of Charles Hitchcock and his father, Edward Hitchcock, which includes the geology of Vermont as well. The restoration is planned to take about a year. Go easy, Fred. Okay. Stop. Coming up. Should they loosen the pressure a little bit? They should. They loosen the pressure a little bit. That's part of the job. You have to be careful. Heads up down there. Once that first section was uh, free in the air, you want to make sure everything is secured properly, that it's not a problem to, to lower it. One step. It wasn't too heavy, but it was bulky, and it, was some, it wasn't something that you can physically uh, pick up on a scaffolding. There was a little bit of damage, but much, much less than some of us worried might occur. So I was interested in seeing how they took it down because they're going to have to put it back. And it will be taken out to Levitt Lane in a warehouse. And Professor Bothner will be overseeing the work with several students to begin cleaning it, uh, restoring the topography. The top of Mount Washington is now gone. We will put the top of Mount Washington back. This week has been spent mostly scrubbing the surfaces. It's wash and dry and wash and dry and wash and dry. Lots of grime gets caught in these little nooks and crannies, but we were successful yesterday to, the day before to get this whole region cleaned up reasonably well, but we'll, we'll, we'll need to um, rebuild the top of the mountain. Um, these guys aren't supposed to be so loose. And I have a bag right there that has all of the mountain tops that need to be repositioned. So it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be fun. Using a Dremel, I can reshape them smoothly enough so that the paint will take. I'm just measuring the towns to make sure that when they're repainted, they're to scale. It's a little tedious. I mean, you know, that town is six inches, six centimeters. That town is seven centimeters. But I mean, it's still fun. He wouldn't have me do it unless it was important. I'd hope, anyway. <laughs> Not every day do you have a map from the 1800s that you're restoring, you know? It's cool. This is an artist prep material called gesso. This is what artist friends do to prepare a canvas before they put their wonderful artwork on it. We chose a professional grade acrylic. I guess we're on kind of a final push. I am painting in all of the town lines, <laughs> which is going to take a little while. In the last week and a half, we've completed the painting of the geology and are now busy fine-tuning such items as town lines and state boundaries and drainage. Today we installed the lower, larger panel of the Hitchcock map. Are you a little nervous about today? Sure. A little.
Join the join the top half of uh, New England together. Ready? Ready? No, we want the bottom for it now. Major challenges. They've been under restoration for the last six, seven months now. Left, left, move left. Left, left, left. left, left. left, left. left, left. Perfect. And making sure they join together nice and plumb. They had to be rotated 90 degrees once they got here and then fit into an increasingly smaller space. The lower panel went in fine yesterday and in, in a couple of hours in the morning and these have taken all day long, so a lot of work. This is a good crew. Well, it'll take a little bit of fixing, but it's perfect. There were gaps as wide as a quarter of an inch. Each of those was filled with some fine slivers. The final frame out of oak was put on. They did a beautiful job. We completed stenciling in all 560 some odd towns in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Western Maine. I'm getting near the end. Yeah, it's been a fun project. Oh, I'm delighted. I, I think Matt Davis and, and UIP and Shawmut working together found a very remarkable place for it. What was the biggest challenge? Seeing it move twice, filling the cracks, building the mountains. The biggest challenge, I guess, really was choosing the color palette. There are three basic colors with lots of variations. The bulk of the map is in greens and blue-greens that represent metasedimentary rocks. And the brown are Precambrian gneisses. The bright colors represent igneous rocks, granites for the most part. This is the granite state. The rocks underneath us right here in Durham um, are part of a diorite. It's like a granite, but a little bit darker in color. Hitchcock did the mapping by horseback and by horse-drawn carriage and by train and on foot at a time when New Hampshire was largely agricultural. What he did was just a remarkable accomplishment. Just think about it. 10 years. 10 years, a couple of assistants, all of New Hampshire, uh, northeastern Vermont, part of Maine, and most of it is absolutely right on. This is a perfect place for it, and I think UNH is really quite fortunate to have it. <laughs> 